Now then, we are on our way to an abandoned fishing lake deep in the woods. I can't wait to fish here. Not only is this place absolutely beautiful, but it's also stuffed with some incredibly colorful wild brown trout. Fish on, fish on. Yes, come on. No way, no way, right at the end. Wild venues like this tend to get fish very, very rarely, which means the fish are always eager to bite when you find them. And as always, when we're fishing places like this, we do have a lovely walk through the forest to get there. I mean, these surroundings, all I can hear are birds tweeting. There's not quite as many leaves on the trees as there will be in summer, but still this place, we've got a lovely stream going down there as well. Fishing places like this really does say spring to me, the start of trout season. Really hope we can get onto a few fish today. I'm sure we will be able to. I do often wonder about streams this sort of depth. Fishing sort of very, very tiny streams is something I've not done. I've done a lot of sort of small stream fishing, but when it comes to places that are just a few inches deep on average and not very wide, I've never really fished it. I mean, I know that there can be trout in them, but are they ever worth fishing? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your advice about how you'd go about fishing somewhere like this, because it's definitely on my agenda to try. There's gotta be fish in here somewhere. Don't think there'd be any of any size, but I could be wrong. My ankle is still a bit sore for those of you wondering after we uh, went over on it on top of a mountain. Oh, that hurts. First trip out since then, so I really hope I don't fall over today because that would be a nightmare. Another reason why I chose this place is because of the nice maintained paths kind of thing that's really useful if you're nursing a bit of an injury. Can't wait to show you this place, it's so unique. It's a big reservoir in the middle of the forest and it did used to be a fishery a long time ago, which was a long time ago, so it's not been a fishery for a while, so it's fully wild now. And it's really cool too, there's a river that runs into the reservoir and at this time of year it sort of floods up, floods into the woods, so it's sort of like a marshy flooded creek and you can almost always rely on a few bites in there. And then on the far side, which is where we'll be fishing last, is a big damn wall where it gets really deep and that's where we're gonna have a chance at an actual big fish, I reckon. Right, I've literally just seen a rise behind me, so I'm gonna have to set up quite quickly and quite quietly, but what we're going for today is the Rigged and Ready X5 Adventure. Just gonna assemble this as normal, but I do have something special to show you, and that is the end section, the tip. I'm gonna be using a tip that I've never used before, actually. These pack rods are just ideal for this kind of thing because you can have them in your backpack and just whip them out when you need to. And we are using that with the RR1000 spinning reel. Let's get my fluorocarbon leader tied on. This is rigged and ready 12 pound fluoro, this. Got my net set up ready because I'm fairly confident of a quick fish here. Come on. Oh, I had a knock then for sure. I had a knock. Oh, definite bite. First bite of the day always gives you a bit of confidence, doesn't it? Well, I just had about three bites using a spoon and no hookup. So what I'm thinking about doing is swapping over to a spinner just so I can retrieve it a little slower. I do love spoons, but part of me feels like they are a lot better in summer. Fish on, fish on. Yes, come on, get in. Doesn't feel like a tiny one either. Yes, we've got one. We have got one. Please stay on. It's a pretty nice one, that. Yes, it's in the net, get in. Hey. That's what we came here for. An absolutely beautiful wild trout and quite a long one as well. Look at the colours on that. That is just so, so beautiful. Wow. 
Well, that is why I love trout fishing so much. That fish was absolutely stunning. I've just been looking back at that video. It's making me so excited to keep fishing and see what's next, because I know they get a lot bigger than that in here. Right, I'm very quietly making my way back over. Hopefully there's going to be another one sat in here somewhere. If you are enjoying this video so far and you do want to see more of the uh, adventurous fishing videos I make, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and sticking around. I do really appreciate everyone that does that. What I'm going to do now is I'm slowly going to head round to the dam wall, making a few pit stops along the way. And I'm fairly sure that's where the even bigger fish are going to be hiding today. Look at that, cute little mouse. Wow, what an experience. I'm not actually 100% sure this is a mouse. I mean, it looks like one, but I'm no expert. It could just as easily be a shrew or something like that. Off he goes. Pleasure meeting you, good sir. Wow, what a little treat that was. I'm in shock, to be honest. I can't believe how close that mouse let me get to it. This is such a pleasant walk out around this reservoir. I have to say while everyone dreads the uh, river close season for fish and I'm sat twiddling my fingers waiting for, for trout season to start. Well, here we go. This is the next little bit of the lake I've been excited to fish. The main pit stop on the way to the dam wall is just off this little jetty thing here. So what I wanted to show you about this rod was actually the rod tip. Take a look at this. This rod comes with tips for different cast weights for lure fishing and a fly fishing tip. But this tip is one you can buy extra that makes the rod even lighter than the lightest tip it comes with. That's what's great about the rigged and ready rods. You can actually accessorize so much. You can even get an extender handle for the bottom of this. Oh, there's loads of midges about. Look at this for a spot, isn't this just unbelievable? I absolutely love fishing places like this. Anyway, my plan for now is I'm going to walk up along this wall and keep casting and keep casting. I'm sure sooner or later we're going to come across another fish. Just seen her eyes just cast over it. Come on. Oh, please go for it. Oh, we had a nibble under there. <laughs> we had a nibble then. So I've casted my way from that corner right the way down here to about here. And no bites just yet, but I'm still hopeful. I think we'll go have a little nosy around here. Wow. Now, doesn't that look fun to slide down? Who knows what's at the bottom, though? Well, unfortunately, it didn't quite happen for me last time I was down here. We had so many bites. I mean, at least we caught something, but I didn't quite feel satisfied. So I've given it a few days and I've come back and hopefully this time we're going to catch some more fish. It's an absolutely beautiful drive getting to this place. Some of the views, a lovely walk down as well. As you've probably already seen, I've also invested in a new 360 camera to try and bring you some more creative shots and sort of better capture the locations I'm in because that's my priority is bringing you guys good content and I'm really trying to up my game on that front. Soon we do the bluebells as well. So what you can see around you now, which is all pretty much just grass, will be a carpet of blue. And I cannot wait for that. I really hope I can sort of hit that sweet spot, that window where they're out, because it can be quite hard to predict when the bluebells are going to come out. And then sometimes they don't hang around for all that long, but I will try and get down here for you so you can see that because it is a proper spectacle. So this is what I've got to show you. You might remember a while ago I was playing around designing some of my own lures. This is the first prototype model of the Northern Lights perch. Look at that, that is so cool. And this is my first ever cast with it. Oh, it casts like an absolute dream as well. I've still got a few tweaks to make on the design and this thing is jam packed full of features. I won't ruin too much though, because 
there's going to be an official announcement on this at some point soon. We also have the bigger ones in a sort of blue and greeny pattern. This is kind of designed with canal pike in mind as well as maybe salmon and bigger trout. Now I'm not going to use this bait for very long. I just want to test the action on it because this is the first time I've used it. But again, it's very far casting. I think this is going to be a killer for the canal pike. While we're on our way to that next fishing spot, I just want to show you my net because I do get lots of questions about what net I use and this is perfect for trout. This is the Rigged and Ready Travel Landing Net. It's actually really, really small, really, really compact. For a small compact frame as well, it's got a really deep net, which means you can actually land really big fish in it if you need to. I've just seen a nice rise down this side. Fish on. Oh no, it's come off. No. Last spot of the day. Come on, I hope there's a fish here in this shallow bit. I'm on the way home now. I just thought I'd have one last roll of the dice. Fish on, fish on, no way, no way, right at the end, right at the end, come on. Yes, get in, right at the end. Oh, it's not huge, but I have been going for ages to try to catch one. Wow. Oh, well, in the dying embers of trip number two, we've lost so many fish and we finally got one. Wow, trout fishing honestly isn't about size to me. Look how stunning that little fish is there. <laughs> I absolutely love catching these. Off you go. Well, I've got to absolutely rush home now because that one last cast turned into about 10 last casts and I'm in trouble with my girlfriend. So I've got to go. As always, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you for the next one.